All right, so here we are doing a field trip today. Today we're gonna to learn how to indicate a vice in, and I'm gonna share with you what I mean by that. Every vice has to be indicated in. So if we take a look at this vice right here, this is our standard vice on the machine, and it wiggles like this, right? I mean, it's just loose. You're throwing it on the table, you're gonna bolt it down, okay? The back jaw is a stationary jaw. It never moves. If you can at all help it, that's when you always want to have your Y0 on the back because it's always stationary. Why? What if I put a piece in here? Imagine this is a piece of steel and it's supposed to be two inches. I put it in there and I come off this side for a zero, but the next piece might be two inches and 10 thousandths or something. Now your zero slightly could be moving. That's not possible when you have a back jaw that's stationary versus a front jaw. As I open it up, you'll see the front jaw is the one that moves. The back jaw is the solid stationary jaw. Now, if I were to take a piece of steel in here and I want to mill it in the vices, as you can see, it moves crooked like this, there's going to be a taper in that material. So when you're machining, unless you purposely want some type of angle, we need to get this. So when we move the table, why don't you bring that camera over here? This is a manual mill. It's a little dirty, but this is more real than not. When we move this X, see how the table moves X and Y? This is the X axis. When the X axis moves left and right, and if, and if I take this indicator, I'll even show you. I'm going to take that indicator right now, and I'm going to pop it down. And I'm going to move my Y axis until my indicator moves. Let me come down a little bit, and let's get over a little bit. I'm using a manual mill here. It's a very good way to explain it. I'm going to keep moving my Y, and boom, you see that dial move? I'm going to put that dial on zero, and now watch. As I move that X across, look at how terrible that's out of line. That's telling me that's that's terribly out of line. So if I tried to slab a piece or mill a piece, it would be crooked. So what I need to do is get this vise indicated in. So what we want to do is we want to make that vise and that back, saw that back jaw straight along with the axes of the machine. Then every time we mill, it will be exactly parallel with the X, the true X machine. So if we come down here, we'll take another look at it. Now, we take a look at this, you can see it wiggles. Now, I got to be honest with you, when I started machining, I'd come over here and tighten this one and loosen this one. These are the two bolts, one right here on your normal vise, and come on over here and take a look at this one, right, one right here. And as them two bolts tighten and loosen, I would go back and forth with an indicator often. Just, you would laugh, and sometimes these guys in early machining will go back and forth. Well, I'm going to show you a trick today how to minimize on that, and very easily, okay? So now you can see it moves. So the first thing I want to do is eye it up. Just put it up in what you think it might be straight, okay? Then I'm going to choose any side, the left side or the right side, and I'm going to, in this case, I'll choose the right side. I'm going to snug it up. I'm not going to go crazy snug. I'm going to do it so it still will pivot a little bit, but it will definitely hold still versus one I keep over here, which I will keep loose, okay? So then when I take my rubber mallet, We'll get into that too. And I tap it this way or tap it this way, it will only pivot off of this bolt over here. Now, the key of this is you always wanna keep your stationary side or your reference side right here with, I use the right side to tighten it down. So that's the one I wanna, I wanna keep my zero. I never wanna loosen or tighten any more this right nut until I'm absolutely zero on both ways and I can snug it, finish snugging it up and I'll snug this one. Let me display. Now, I, you saw me tighten the right nut up, so I'm gonna come over here on the right side of the vise, and that's where I'm gonna begin my indicating. Boom, right here, as close as you can to the end. And I'm gonna put it on zero, okay? Now I'm gonna run this across with the little motor. I'm gonna run this across, and you watch that dial. Well, look at that. Do that two times. That's amazing. I actually did it with my eye perfectly. But let's say we lived in a real world and it didn't happen like that. Okay. Let's say, let me, let me, let me uh, take this thing and pick it up and let's knock this thing way out of whack. Okay. There, now it's knocked out of whack. Well, all my years of machining, I didn't do that too much. But that gives you, I'll go continue this video because it's going to give you a good understanding. Now there's going to be a taper in that. So imagine I come down. I move the X just to touch it. Just maybe touch it. And move, crank, show them how I'm cranking the Y down here. 
See how I'm cranking the Y? This is the Y. I'm cranking that. Okay, bring it back up to the indicator. I'm cranking it real slow. Once I see that dial move, I'll put it on zero for starts. Now I'm gonna fly it back across. Now you see, this is what it normally would be like unless your eye was as straight as, you see? So I'm gonna stop right there. And as I stop right there, I'm gonna just take this and I'm gonna tap it right back, just this side, because the right side of the station, I'm gonna tap it right back to the zero that I started with the solid side. See that? There you go. Now, don't mind that little bumping. It's just a manual mill. It's it's for video use. Now I'm gonna continue. And I'm gonna stop right there. And as you can see, it's bumping a little back and forth. The manual mill's a little old. If this was a machining center, that dial would hold right still and either be going back or forth, but it's certain you can get a very good idea. Now I'm very close. Each one of them graduates is one thousandths. Actually, uh, I think it's a half a thousand. There's a, looks like, appear to be 10 of them. Uh, so about a half a thousand. It's just telling you how far off. It's irrelevant as long as you can keep it on zero. Now I'm just going to tap it a little bit more. And sometimes it's a stubborn one. Sometimes it won't want to go. You go back to your zero, move it to zero, and move it back again. The right side or the left side can be stationary. The bolt that you tighten hardest is the bolt. Now you're going to use for that. Now let's zoom back across here. I used to go back and forth 20, 25 minutes with this thing when I was learning machining 30 years ago. Okay, we're right there. Now you see that, that zero moved a little bit, okay? Now I'm gonna take this Y down here again and I'm gonna crank it. Okay, now put it back on the dial, crank it back to zero and we're gonna fine tune it. Let's go back a little bit. You'll see when you learn machining the small amount you're dealing with. I'm gonna. Now I'm going to shoot back over there. This is, notice, I didn't tap it over here. I won't tap it over here. I'll only tap it over here. This is the solid side. I'm going to shoot back across. And we're, about, we're a few thou off. Now let's go like this. I'm going to tap it back the other way. Just a little bit. There. Now I'm going to shoot back over there. Remember, I only tapped on the left side, the loose one, look at that, she's holding right there. She's holding right there. She's right there. Now, if you're dealing with, if you had a machining center you want to get closer, you could. But this thing being an old mill, now I'm gonna tighten this loose side. I'm gonna snug it up pretty good. Then I'm gonna tighten this side pretty good, as well as you want to tighten. And then you can, let's, let's shoot it back over. Now, uh, tightening that left side up might have, you know, might have adjusted it a little, but let's see where we're at with it. That's the backlash you're seeing in a machine. See, if I go the other way. There. Now, if I want to, I can just loosen this one up a little bit and just tap it over to, oh, wrong way. Tap it over here. There you go, to zero. The other side is absolutely tighter. See that? That's how much play is in this mill. You see that? So if I go back over there, the play in the mill is irrelevant. It's holding right still. See that? It's holding right there between three and four. So if I moved it back to zero, and I went back there, there's a lot of play in this mill. These are the old days, but it's an excellent machine to teach you on. See that back and forth like that? They're just feeling them screws in this old machine. Very loose, loose machine. I'll tighten them excellent. And there you have it, right there, going back and forth. See, now it's going like this. I tighten this X up, put it right here. I tighten that up a little bit so the table isn't wiggling as much. There, you're right there. You're within a half a thou from here to here. That vise is solid. You put a piece in there, it's gonna be perfectly parallel. So thank you for watching. Um, we'll have more of these field trips as we get involved more, and then we'll move on to some of the machining centers and get more involved in programming and, and things we need to tell the machining centers that we don't need to tell these. So thanks for watching. CNC machinists made easy.